away and taking more steps to come to the mosque. As for the explanation of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthimin, rahimahullah, then he said, with regard to this hadith, and from the virtues of that, obviously all this chapter, the virtues of walking to the mosque, he said, and from the virtues of that also, is that a person, if he purifies himself in his house and he goes out to the mosque, nothing causes him to go out except the prayer. Then the hadith which the author brings here shows that he does not take a step except that Allah raises him a level because of it. And the second step removes a sin from him. The Shaykh said, and there occurs in the other hadith, that he does not take a step except that Allah raises him one level on account of it and removes a sin on account of it. So for a single step, he earns the raising of one level and the removal of a sin with the condition that he performs the wudu in his house and he completes the wudu. Then he goes out to the mosque and nothing causes him to go out except the prayer. Then this person, for every footstep which he takes, Allah raises him a rank and removes a sin from him for every footstep. So this is a tremendous favor from Allah, the mighty and majestic. As for the third hadith in the chapter, hadith 1062, وعن أبي بن كعب رضي الله عنه قال كان رجل من الأنصار لا أعلم أحدا أبعد من المسجد منه وكانت لا تخطئه صلاة فقيل له لو اشتريت حمارا لتركبه في الظلماء وفي الرمضاء قال ما يسرني أن منزلي إلى جنب المسجد إني أريد أن يكتب لي ممشايا إلى المسجد ورجوئي إذا رجعت إلى أهلي فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد جمع الله لك ذلك كله رواه مسلم And from Ubay ibn Ka'ab رضي الله عنه who said There used to be a man from the Ansar I do not know I do not know anyone who lived farther away from the mosque than him and he had not used to miss any prayer so it was said to him if you were to buy a donkey so that you could ride it at times of darkness and when the ground is severely hot so he said it would not please me that my house were next to the mosque. I want that my walking to the mosque and my returning to my family when I return should be written down for me. So Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah has gathered all of that for you. Reported by Muslim. As for who reports this hadith, then firstly we already had this hadith a long, long, long time ago and it occurs in the version of Shaykh al-Albani as hadith number 141 and we had it as hadith number 137. It occurs in the 13th chapter of the book Fi Bayani Kathrati Turuq al-Khayr An explanation of the many paths to performing good. And as for who reports the hadith, then just as Nawawi, rahimahullah, said, it's indeed reported by Muslim in the book of mosques and places of prayer, hadith 663, also reported by, by Abu Dawood in his Sunan in the book of the prayer, 
Hadith 557, also reported by Ibn Majah in his Sunan, in the Book of the Mosques and the Congregation, Hadith number 783. And those wording, the wording of Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah, it makes an, an addition that where in, in the wording we have here, that it says, it was said to him that this man who never used to miss a prayer, he lived the furthest out of the people away from the mosque, but he would never miss any prayer. So it was said to him. In the narrations of the Sunan, then the narrator Ubay ibn Ka'ab, the companion Ubay ibn Ka'ab says, I said to him. So he said in, the, in those narrations, it makes it clear that it was the Ubay ibn Ka'ab who said to him, why don't you buy yourself a donkey so that you could ride to the end. To the end. Likewise, in the narration of Abu Dawood, it mentions, so this, what the man had said, that he, it didn't please him, that he would live ne right next to the mosque. So this news reached, the, in the narration of Abu Dawood, this news reached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he asked this man about it. So he mentioned the reason for that, he said, because I want that my walking to the mosque and my returning to my family when I return should be written down for me. So then, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah has gathered all of that for you. you know, Allah has gathered and granted that all for you. The hadith also being reported by Imam Ahmad in the Musnad and by Al-Bayhaqi in his, in his uh, Sunan. As for three of the words to explain, he's saying, لَا تُخْتِئُهُ Then the Imam Abdul Hassan al-Sindi said in his notes to Ibn Majah, a لَا تَفُوتُهُ I mean, This man would not miss out on any prayer. And as for his saying, the prayer, Salat, he would not miss out on a prayer. Ibn Allan said in his explanation of Riyadh al-Salihin, meaning in the mosque. He won't miss any prayer, meaning in the mosque. As is shown by the context. And the word Ar-Ramda, of this word Ar-Ramda, the root of it being the, the Ra and the Meem and the Da, the Dad, is the same root as, as the month Ramad, Ramadan. It's obviously the root indicating severe heat. And with regard to this word, ar Ramadan, he said, why don't you buy a, a donkey so that you could go at times of Dhalma, times of darkness, and times of Ramadan. Then again, the Imam Abul Hassan as Sindi said in his, in his notes to Ibn Majah, it means hot sand, when the sand is hot. Likewise, earlier on in the book, an Nawawi himself, he said the meaning is ground, the ground which is struck by severe heat that is a ramda very hot ground as for the points of benefit that can be taken from the hadith then amongst them are the following three points of benefit firstly that which Abu Dawood quoted as a chapter heading for the hadith the virtue of walking to the prayer fadlul mashi ila salat the virtue of walking to the prayer secondly that which al-bayhaqi al Quoted as a chapter heading for the hadith. The virtue of one who walks far to the mosque. And what occurs with regard to seeking reward as a result of one's footsteps. And the third point of benefit that which Imam Nawawi quotes in his explanation of Sahih Muslim that he said, it shows affirmation of, well, this hadith being additional to what came before, it shows affirmation that the reward for the footsteps applies to returning from the prayer, just as it is confirmed with regard to going for it. In other words, a person is rewarded when he walks to the mosque. Likewise, he's rewarded, as, as confirmed in this hadith, for his walking back to his home as well. Both, is, both are confirmed. The return, the reward for confirming, is confirmed by this hadith. The reward for going back home is confirmed in this hadith. As for the explanation of Shaykh Ibn Thimeen, rahimahullah, then he said with regard to this hadith, <coughs> he said, and from the 
points of benefit of that is that it is befitting that a person comes to the mosque walking <coughs> and that he goes back walking this is what is afdal this is what is better this is what is more excellent this is what is better afdal he goes to the mosque walking and goes back home walking and the proof for that is the story of the man of the ansar who lived far away so when it was said to him if only you bought a you bought a donkey for you to ride at times of darkness and times of severe heat so he said i will not buy it i will not buy one i hope from allah for reward for my footsteps going and returning so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Allah has written that, all of it for you. The Shaykh said. So this shows that coming to the mosque on foot is better than coming on transport. Because the reward for the footsteps will be counted for him. Then he makes a point with regard to a person who has excuse though. A person may ask the question, what about a person who has an excuse? He's not able to walk. So the Shaykh said. However, if a person is ma'adhur, a person has an excuse, then there is no harm in his taking a car. And he's coming by car. And the footstep of a car is the revolution of its wheel. When it turns around once, then this is counted like a step. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Since when it revolves, the part which was touching the ground is raised up and it revolves until it goes and touches again a second time upon the ground so therefore it is just like the foot being raised from the ground and then being placed for a second time so if a person has an excuse then there is no harm that he comes by car and every revolution of the wheel will be in the position of a footstep Sheikh said, so this is also, I mean this narration is also with regard to the virtues of walking to the mosques. That Allah, the Most High, writes for the person all of his footsteps, going and returning. 